You would express it by the time you were born. Because as soon as the cells started to divide, the cancer gene would say, okay, time to make cancer. So how can you have so-called cancer gene for 30 or 40 years sitting in your body and you don't have cancer and then you get cancer? Should I go back and say the gene caused that? And the answer is no. In this paper by Niehaut, Metaphors in the Roles of Genes in Development, he, play, he played it out in this true, truth, a simple statement of truth that I'm going to show you because I want to use his paper because the statement is so perfect. But the fact is this. What did he say? He said this. For 50 years, we have believed that genes are in control. We've been repeating it and saying it over and over again for 50 years so that it's part of every textbook. And the bottom line was, that was never a scientific reality. It was never scientifically established that genes control anything. It's not true. What is the truth? Well, the answer is this. The first thing, conventional belief, genes control biology, is totally false. Why? Genes can't turn themselves on. Genes can't turn themselves off. How are they going to control anything? They can't control themselves. So bottom line is the genes aren't in charge. So the question is, if I need a gene to be activated, what would, why would a gene be activated? To make the proteins for the cell that needs to do the behavior. So the truth statement is this. When a gene product is needed, a signal from its environment, not an emergent property of the gene itself, activates expression of the gene. Well, that's somewhat of a complicated sentence, so let's simplify it. Just read line two and line four. And if we read that, it says, a signal from its environment activates expression of the gene. What does that mean? The genes in your body are selected not because they're self-selecting. The genes are always selected in response to the environment that you're in. So if you had that cancer gene and for 35 years, let's say, you stood around saying, hey, I don't have cancer, and all of a sudden cancer happened, are we going to go to the gene and blame the gene? Or what would we actually look for as responsible if you understand the true statement? The signal from the environment. What change in your life? promoted activation of the gene that was sitting dormant for 35 years. Ah, we've been focusing on the gene all the time. The point is we have to start focusing on the signals. The signals do this. Well, let me explain how this happens. When we look at a cell nucleus, this is where the chromosomes and the DNA is. I can stain the chromosomes and you break open the nucleus, you can see all these different chromosomes. You have 23 pairs of chromosomes to make a human. They're called pairs of chromosomes because you get 23 chromosomes from your mother, 23 chromosomes from your father, and they're matched pairs. So, in fact, even I can see that one of these is from the mother and one of these is from the father because you can color code them. Well, that's a nice, interesting experiment, but the question is this. What am I staining? I'm not staining DNA. So what's in the nucleus? And the answer is this. 50% of the nucleus is DNA and 50% is protein. And the reason why we have a problem here is this. For 50 years, everyone was so focusing on the genes that when they wanted to study the DNA, what did they do? They'd go find a nucleus from the cell, they'd break it open, expose all the chromosomes, and you know what they do? Separate the protein from the DNA and then throw away the protein. And for 50 years, they've thrown away the protein in their focus on studying DNA. And now, all of a sudden, in the last few years, the question is, Hey, what have we been throwing away? And the answer is the control. They, for 50 years, they've thrown the control away, what controls the genes, and studied pure DNA. There is no such thing as pure DNA in any organism. The DNA is always associated with the protein. So what's the function of the protein? Look how simple this is. The protein forms a sleeve around the DNA. What do I mean by that? Imagine my bare arm is a gene. Let's say it's the gene for blue eyes. And I say, okay, can you read the gene for blue eyes, yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Okay, but all of a sudden, well, what does the DNA look like when I put it back in the nucleus? Put the sleeve of protein on it. Can you read the gene for, for blue eyes, yes or no? no? If you want to read the gene for blue eyes, what do you have to do? Take the sleeve off. Well, the sleeve is protein. How does a sleeve come off? Here's the protein, and it's locked onto my arm. If you can remember back about 15 minutes ago, what is it that will cause the change in the shape of the protein? Signal. Ah, so when I add the signal from the environment, all of a sudden, then what happens is this. The protein changes shape, pulls away from the DNA. Now I can read the gene, and when the signal is removed, the protein will come back, 
and cover up the sleeve again. So the bottom line was this. The gene was just sitting there all the time. It's whether the proteins are present or absent. So if I look at it this way, then we understand this. I said you were made out of protein. The understanding is that DNA is the blueprint for the protein. In conventional textbooks, because they've thrown away the protein for 50 years, they don't talk about this. Conventional talks about the DNA goes to the RNA, which is a, like a Xerox copy of the DNA, and the RNA is then turned into the protein. And then they talk about the primacy of DNA. That's what's in all the textbooks. You are a re result of your DNA. But they've thrown away the protein. So when we put it back in, it says, ah, the protein covers up the DNA. The protein is a sleeve. But off, you actually have to have the environmental signal. So remember what Niehaus' quote was? A signal from the environment activates the expression of the DNA. So the bottom line right here is this. The environmental signal comes in and changes the shape of the regulatory protein, which removes the sleeve, exposes the DNA, and then I can make my proteins. So rather than the primacy of DNA, which is conventional thought, it's actually the primacy of the environment. It's the environment that selects your genes, not the genes themselves. So if I wanted to illustrate it, let's go back to our picture of how the cell worked. What I showed you was this. The signal from the environment activated the receptor, which activated the effector, and the effector activated the secondary signal to go down to the protein. Remember that picture just a minute ago? Well, here's the point. In this illustration, the protein's not there. And if I need the protein because the environmental signal, I have to respond to the signal and the protein's not there, what would I need to do if the protein's not present in the cell? Go to the nucleus and activate the gene for the making of the protein, right? So let's watch the behavior of this as it happens. So basically what's going to happen is this. The environmental signal joins to the receptor, activates this whole process so that I activate this, but look, the signal goes down, the proteins are missing. If the proteins are missing, I need the proteins to make the, ro the proper response, but they're not there. So what I have to do then is take this signal and go into the nucleus of the cell where the DNA is, but the DNA is covered up by a sleeve of protein. And at periodic points at every gene, there's a control protein called a regulatory protein. And you know what happens? The signal from the environment binds to the right gene by the shape. It doesn't bind to this one, wrong shape. Binds to this one. Now, what happens when a signal binds to a protein? Changes the shape of the protein. And watch what happens. As soon as I change the shape of the protein, I cause the sleeve to come off the DNA. And when it happens, look what I'm exposing. The gene is now exposed. And what am I going to do with this? Well, I need to make a copy of the gene called RNA, which then goes into the cell where it's turned into the protein. So the bottom line is, then I take the RNA molecule, make a copy of this DNA molecule, and then this is a blueprint of the gene, and this is called RNA, messenger RNA, and this blueprint is actually used to make the protein.